Greetings and salutations, and they were lab partners by But How About No. Chapter 12. The Christmas Issue. Beginning of text messages. Booty Shaker 9000. Leo just jump scared a, a horde of carolers. Quirked up. As he should. They're a blight on this world. Booty Shaker 9000 sent a video. Quirked up. He did not just steal their mic. Leo can beatbox? Booty Shaker 9000 sent a video. Quirked up. Mikey drops bars? Booty Shaker 9000. It's a shared family skill. Quirked up. Okay, periodic table song looking motherfucker. Booty Shaker 9000. It's the only part of chemistry I enjoy. Quirked up. Fucking nerd. Booty Shaker 9000. It's tongue sticking out emoji. Quirked up. Mi padres says hello, BT dubs. I think May has been in cahoots with them. They're giving me the eyes whenever my phone goes off. I'm afraid I'm going to have to let them down about the p possibility of grandkids one more year. Booty Shaker 9000. If this gambit keeps going on, I am going to have to start charging acting fees for playing your fake boyfriend, sweetums. Quirked up. You act like I had anything to suggest that I am, in fact, in a romantic relationship, baby cakes. The wishful thinking, wishful sighing I am doing is for the Egyptian cotton sheets that are about to grace my skin for the next few days. Booty Shaker 9000. Have your parents picked you up already? Quirked up. Yep. Headed to their hotel right now. I forgot that, like, empty space and fields can exist. New York. Booty Shaker 9000. What a town. <clears throat> Quirked up. I have heard Mariah Carey's All I Want for Christmas approximately five times too many during this drive. Booty Shaker 9000. Want me to cue into the car's radio and shoot for six? Quirked up. I beg you to not. Booty Shaker 9000. You have sent a concerning amount of memes to me in the last... Half an hour. Quirked up. I have scavenged all day in the fields, and this is how I'm treated? I want a divorce. Booty Shaker 9000. A relationship was built on a convenience. Quirked up. <gasps> you know what? I'm keeping the hoodies. Booty Shaker 9000. I still have your bomber jacket. Quirked up. Um, dot, dot, dot. Baby, please. I was just mad when I said that. You know I still love you. Booty Shaker 9000. I will have the papers sent to you in three to five business days. Quirked up. God damn it. Quirked up. Donatello, you are not ready for this hotel room. Quirked up sent a photo. Booty Shaker 9000. I have a slight envy for that king size mattress. Quirked up. Grandma Patricia got us the fucking hookup. I would like to thank God and also Patricia's most recent sugar daddy. Amen. Booty Shaker 9000. How old is she? Quirked up. 76 years young. She will kick your ass, Vomitello. Booty Shaker 9000. I don't doubt that. Quirked up sent a photo. Booty Shaker 9000. That bathroom is bigger than my old bedroom. Nice dinosaur onesie, by the way. Quirked up. Disregard! I didn't realize I caught myself in the mirror! Booty Shaker 9000. I think that's going to be your new profile photo. Quirked up. Donatello Othono Von Ryan, Hamato Splinter Sun, I will rain hellfire upon you! Booty Shaker 9000. Wow, I am so scared of the little Tyrannosaurus Rex. Quirked up. Count your fucking days. Booty Shaker 9000. Heart emoji. Quirked up. This is a Santa tell me hate post. Arianda can catch these fucking hands. Booty Shaker 9000. Um. Ahem. <clears throat> <clears throat> Quirked up. Donnie, no. Tell it to me straight. Booty Shaker 9000. I quite enjoy Aria Grande's music. I find her singing to be delightful. Quirked up. Betrayal! Backstabbery! Booty Shaker 9000. Sorry, sweetums. No one comes in between me and my pop ladies. Quirked up sent a photo. Booty Shaker 9000. Well, that's a bit dramatic. Booty Shaker 9000. Numbers on you looking over the PKK blueprints before I put Sheldon on fabricating the base? Oh, thank fucking God. Send it over, Quirked up. I have been stuck in a conversation with my trad fam auntie for the last 30 minutes. You're giving me my exit ticket from hearing about proper gender roles in society for the third time. And now she's tearing into the littles for grabbing a second dinner roll. What a lady. Booty Shaker 9000. Yikes. Quirked up. Yeah. I think my cousin is going to come put her in her place if my auntie drops one more line about her place as a woman. 
pretty sure that doesn't record it. Corked up, you already know. Corked up, Cousin Battle Holiday Season 2026. Corked up, sent a video. Pretty sure that doesn't. Is that Uno? Corked up, yes. And I have lost for the past four years. I am fucking not losing again. Booty Shaker 9000, best of luck. Quarked up. Sad face. Quarked up. Crying sad face. Booty Shaker 9000, you poor thing. Quarked up. Send me consolation memes for my sorrows. Booty Shaker 9000, already on it. Quarked up. Would you like to form an alliance with me? Booty Shaker 9000, how vague. Quarked up. I forgot to bring my waterproof cover for my prosthetics, so... I got left behind for the family pool shenanigans. Do you want to fuck it up on Minecraft with me for a while? Booty Shaker 9000. Absolutely. Give me five minutes to find my headset. Corked up. Ooh, real gamer we got here. Booty Shaker 9000. Yes. Yes, I am. Corked up. <laughs> okay, loser. Meet you on Discord? Booty Shaker 9000. Gotcha. Hello, you said as you hopped onto the call. It's been a minute, baby cakes. You act like I haven't gotten a moment's peace since you left. Donnie's dry tone crackled in through your head old headphones. You texted me so much, it's like you never left. Can't have you missing your sweetums, can we? You croned into your headphones. I roll, Donnie said. I'm really going to start charging you for a fake boyfriend fee. You cackle. Man, you'd missed your buddy. I sent you a link to the world, you said. Hop on and you scoundrel. I hope you understand that I will be committing war crimes as soon as technologically possible, Donnie said. You could hear the click of his keyboard through his mic as he loaded into the world. Can we get a base built first? Maybe some resources collected? You tried. No one ever lets me shine, Donnie whined. You imagined him throwing his head back with his arm over his head and smiled. Donnie finally loaded into the world, prompting you to give him a welcoming hint. He had an atomic glass skin on his avatar, because of course he did. Hey now, you said. I never said no, I just said that we should build a base first. Donnie hit you back and started bouncing around your avatar. Can we build a needlessly complex and meticulously timed set of explosions that destroy this world down to the bedrock? Donnie asked, sounding giddy. You crouched at him in game and attempted to break the blocks beneath his feet. Only if you do the redstone engineering. You broke the block, but Donnie managed to hop over to the next one in time. That's what I was hoping you would say. Donnie practically squealed into the mic. God, you had missed hearing Donnie's voice. Lay out the game plan for me, Dee Dee, and I'll start mining. <clears throat> What's your experiences with building mob farms? Do I look like a noob? You asked, a little offended. Well, don't answer that. Is it time, Dee Dee? You asked. In the middle of your base, there was a single lever mounted on a gold block. Donnie had been yelling at you for the past hour not to touch it, which of course only made you more eager to see what it does. You had only been able to quell your burning curiosity by going down into the mines or spending time mindlessly harvesting gunpowder from the mob spawner. You had seen very little of Donatello during your gameplay, but he was constantly chattering to you about the redstone mechanics you couldn't quite bring yourself to understand. I do believe it is time, sweetums, Donnie announced. Two straight hours of genius mechanics and engineering to this final catharsis. Drama queen. It's a pastime, Donnie admitted. Don't forget to max out your render distance before we start. Jesus, how far did you set this thing up? You asked. Donnie's avatar walked into the base and crouched next to the lever. Just enough, he said cryptically. Would you like to do the honors? Oh, fuck yeah, you said. With a flick of the lever, your avatars were moving up the tower that made up your base with a complex moving staircase you didn't even know was built into it. By the time the two of you reached the top of the tower, the explosions in the distance just barely starting. You put fireworks in this, you asked, dumbfounded. Pizzazz, Donnie replied. You could just imagine him sitting in his chair and flapping his hands from excitement while he watched his build come into fruition. The two of you sat and watched while the world around you was taken over by explosions and decimated all the way down to the bedrock. It was a little terrifying, to be honest. Donnie, you have impressed the shit out of me, you said. The two of you were left in on a little island that was floating above a sea of bedrock by the time the TNT had finished going off. 
You appreciated that Donnie had let your little castle survive the mayhem. Why, thank you, sweetums. My engineering skills are only enhanced by the world of Minecraft, Donnie said, sounding smug. I'm letting the ego pass just because you have made my day, you said, rolling your eyes. Anything to keep you company while you're abandoned, sweetums, he said. It is by my humble duty during this time of giving. My light and shining armor in this dark abyss of this that is the season, truly, you said as you readjusted your headphones. It's Christmas? Donnie asked, sounding confused. It's the most cheery of all the holidays? <sighs> you huffed out air through your nose. It's overhyped. This excitement should be reserved for the more notable occasions of Halloween, Valentine's, and May the 4th. I hate to break it to you, sweetums, but it's not even Christmas Eve yet, he said. Donnie looked at you with his avatar. Is Family Knife not going as well as you've been telling me? No, they're delightful. It's, I just... You trailed off, thinking of how to put it. I just really don't like this time of year, if I'm being honest. Any particular reason? Besides the same 20 songs on repeat, you asked, attempting to change the tone of the conversation. You know what I mean, sweetums. Donnie chided. Damn it, foiled by Donnie's perception of ass again. Don, I appreciate you, you said, but Christmas isn't the time for taking on another's personal emotional baggage. Hmm, Donnie hummed. You heard him leave the voice call on Discord at the same time you heard the moment your phone started buzzing. You answered the video call, half laughing, half incredulous. I guess I should have expected this, you said, setting your phone against the screen of your laptop. Donnie was at his desk and wearing one of the hoodies you had finally given back. It was only a matter of time before you had your hands on it again. Righto, my dear comrade, Donnie said, giving you a smile through the screen. Talking about things is part of our deal, remember? Scoff, you shook your head. I would like to speak with a lawyer. Oh, and why is that? He asked, leaning on his hands as his arms were propped on the desk. <clears throat> I need to renegotiate the terms of our agreement. I obviously agreed to it under duress and false pretenses, you argued. Donnie laughed. You could hear the creak of his desk chair as he leaned back. You could tell that he had his feet up on the ledge underneath his desk, a common position when the two of you were working together in the lab. We became friends under duress and false pretenses, Donnie said. I hardly think that your argument will hold up in court of law. And whose damn fault is that, Dee Dee? I was aggressed! Oh, you were fine, Donnie insisted. You stuck your tongue out at him, sparking a laugh from Donnie. The conversation stilled for a moment. If you truly don't want to talk about your holiday blues, you don't have to, Donnie said softly to break the silence. No, it's not that. It's just you cut yourself off with a groan, putting your face in your hand. Gah, this is a, something I like to talk about. Like ever? I don't even know where to start. Most likely the beginning, he said smugly. You snorted at him. It all started with a singularity containing all of the mass that ever is or will be at the center of what we now know to be the universe. Pot, kettle, you know the phrase, Donnie said, rolling his eyes at you. It's your influence, Dee Dee. I was just the sweetest thing before you came along. I somehow doubt that to be true, he said, crossing his arms in front of him. You hacked into my accounts within a week of knowing me. Touché, you said. You almost wish Donnie was in the hotel room with you. What had it been? A week since you'd seen each other, too? It was the longest time the two of you had been apart since you had met. Big rooms didn't seem so empty when he was next to you. Do you really have the space to hear about my dumb holiday blues? You asked, feeling unsure of yourself. You fiddled with the tassels of the truly god-awful decorative parallels on your bed. Do you even need to ask, sweetums? He asked. I'm offended. There's a thing called common courtesy, you defended. There is a thing called autism. I have it, Donnie deadpanned. I don't know if you've noticed, but I have don't have the facilities to lie. You barked out a laugh. You would, <laughs> you would be a shit counselor. I make a better listener, Donnie agreed. He pulled a purple water bottle out of nowhere and held it against his chest so the straw was just under his mouth. Now, talk, dum-dum. Meanie, you said. You bit the inside of your cheek, trying to think of how to start. Okay, so four years ago, yesterday, actually, I got the base of my prosthetic 
installed into my hand. Donnie chirped, sounding surprised. Oh? Yep, he said, popping the pee. They got me healed up just enough for the amputation, after the amputation to turn me into a cyborg. The whole thing was just, ugh, ugh, Donnie echoed. It fucking hurt, to say the least, you said. You ran your fingers over the metal and polymers that protruded out of the palm of your hand. You could almost feel the pain from the healing process. And, I don't know, Christmas was just a few days after they released me from the hospital. I was drugged up and miserable, and I couldn't even open my presence with my old prosthetics. Because Stockman Tech sucks ass. Donnie interjected, gesturing with his drink. Yes, it really does, you agreed. And, like, being hopped up on painkillers that just barely worked just wasn't the idea of quote-unquote holiday spirit everyone was trying to make me believe it was. I know I'm so, so lucky for my prosthetics, but it was just... You sat there for a second, taking a moment to just look at Donnie's image on your phone. He nodded his head to beckon you to go on. I was really angry for a long time. I lost a lot of friends that year because of how shitty I was, you admitted quietly. I see you haven't grown out of it yet, Donnie said. You shook your head, biting your tongue to keep from giving Donnie the satisfaction of you laughing. Thank you for that, Vomitello, you said. May actually the one that started me down and made me get my act straight. Every day since has been trying to get away from that old version of me. I mean, there's still me, but I've grown. I don't act like a jerk to everyone anymore. And Christmas is just a more glaring reminder of your formal self. Donnie deduced. You nodded. Something along the those lines of that, D. Donnie hummed, thinking for just a moment. If it's any consolation, my brothers and I went through something similar after the Krang attack, Donnie said, casting his gaze to the side while he talked. We couldn't speak about what happened for months. Must let's address the issues that led to the Krang getting free in the first place. I was holed up in my lab. Leo was constantly training. Donnie was... Mikey was disappearing every night doing who knows what raf was the only one keeping the family together donnie said he looked up at you and shrugged we would have fallen apart without him here's to being a post trauma shit ass you tried donnie shook his head at you with a smile those fuckers really got us down huh you said softly i hope you and your brothers kicked the shit out of that crying donnie gave you a wiry grin we did Whenever my migraines start, it helps to know that Krang Prime is out floating in the prism dimension for eternity with a giant hole in his forehead. Courtesy of your tech? Courtesy of my rad ninja skills, actually, Donnie said. He looked smug for just a moment before remembering the conversation at hand. Regardless of shit-ass behavior, Donnie stated, making air quotes, I don't believe that our teenage selves are any indication of the adults we are growing into. I mean, if my younger self could see the types of processors I use now, he'd blow a gasket. Oh, baby Donnie, the horrors he has yet to unleash upon the tech world, you said, putting on a uh, dreamlike voice. Critics don't get shares in Genius Built, trademark pending, Donnie teased. Wow, I'm sure going to be just so broke with my equally, if not more successful, prosthetic designing company, you deadpanned. You're not the only one, only big player entering the game, Don. Donnie let out a soft chirp at that, one that almost reminded you of a coup. Did it help at all to talk about it? Donnie asked. It did, D. Thank you for listening. No probs, Donnie responded. I may not be high on the uh, empathy scale, but I am attempting to be better at the whole emotions thing. Careful now. You might ruin your quote-unquote bad boy persona, you teased. I trust we can keep this between friends? Delete my onesie picture and we can, we'll discuss it. Donnie made a noise of consideration. Better to lose my in image, methinks. You heard your parents talking just outside the door of your shared room, causing you to sigh. You ducked into the bathroom just to finish out your conversation in peace. My parents just got back. I'll text you later, you asked. Sure, he said. Please keep me updated on your aunt. I'm betting money on a physical fight before Christmas. Will do, you said. And thank you, Donnie. Really, I appreciate you. Donnie smiled softly at you. Likewise, sweetums. You clicked off the call and held your phone to your chest, 
taking a moment to just breathe before heading out and facing your parents. Just a few more days until you were back at the dorms and you could see him properly.